Hello guys from headquarters in Seward, Alaska. My name's Ben, this is Rebecca, and welcome to the biggest RVing and overlanding mistakes people make when visiting our home state. Of Alaska. Yes. <laughs> Before we get into the video, we do have to share a few things with you. Um, if you're planning on coming to Alaska, be sure to check out our two Facebook groups. We have one for RV travelers and one for overland travelers. We'll put the links in the description below. Fantastic resources. Uh, we also would be remiss if we did not mention our new website, www.hisandhershub.com. Fantastic resources as well. In particular, we've got a 101 course that's about to go up about RVing to Alaska. And we also have our paid course, How to Create Mobile Income and Location Independence. This is our flagship His and Hers University mm -hmm. course. Really excited to be sharing it with you guys. Be sure to check it out. Look forward to seeing more of you guys out on the road. All right, what are our qualifications? Uh, We're Alaskans. Our, yeah, <laughs> but our viewpoint is actually quite different from the tourist. That's true. And I'm not going to say one holds more value to the other, but I will say ours is priceless and will really help you make the most out of your trip and stay safe. Well, there's things that you realize when you live here that just visiting you don't think about. And then as we live here, there's things that people who visit say and we're mm -hmm. like, oh, gee, that never crossed our mind. So both benefits of both. Yep. So real quick, our qualifications. We moved to Alaska in 07. We bought an RV in 11. And from 11 to 15, we spent as much time during the summer months, April to October, on the road exploring Alaska in the motorhome. We were those people like first to de-winterize, yep. last to winterize, diehards out on the road until it snowed. <laughs> and then we did three massive road trips around North America, coming home during the summer to obviously enjoy this amazing state. Mm -hmm. uh, as for what is happening now, we started with an RV blog back in 2014 called His and Hers Alaska, and it's morphed into what you're watching today. All right, well, let's dive right in and start with number one. The biggest mistake people make is not to come here in the first place. Alaska is gorgeous. It's the land of adventure, one of the most beautiful places on the planet. Very accessible whether you drive the Alcan, very doable these days, or fly. We have nonstop flights from all over the country and you can rent an RV or a car when you get here. Biggest mistake number two, giving in to fears. Whether that fear is what might happen to your rig on the, we'll call it 5,000 mile-ish journey from the lower 48 up and back, or whether it's fear of being in such remote places. There are times when you will be hundreds of miles from cell phone service and literally the only person around for tens or hundreds of miles. The land is very vast, guys. Mistake number three, forgetting that Alaska is more than a destination. It is a state of mind. And we regularly encourage people as they plan their trips to remember this. Like, it's not about seeing everything as much as it is about really experiencing it while you're here. It's the last frontier and you go home a different person. So make the time to really enjoy that. Mistake number four, I know a lot of people do it, but over planning their trip. You do not need to map out every single night of your journey. Mm -hmm. It goes back to you know, embracing Alaska. So do not over plan your trip. And allow time for rest mm -hmm. and driving because it takes a lot longer to get where you're gonna go and you're gonna get a lot tireder than you think you will. Mistake number five, trying to do too much in too short of a period of time. You know, if you don't have much time, the option of renting an RV does exist mm -hmm. and you can do seven nights. But the kicker is don't try to do, I'll call it the grand loop, <laughs> Kenai Peninsula, Anchorage, Fairbanks, and all the way back around in seven days. And Valdez. And Valdez. It's ridiculous. You will spend the entire time driving. If it's Pick your first vision. trip and you have a week and you're renting an RV, you know, start with the Kenai Peninsula and then you know what, do the interior. But it, falls right back on embracing the destination. Mistake number six, pretty much falls in line with what we've already been discussing, but not spending enough time here. Really 
take as much vacation as you possibly can or get here as early and stay as late as you can uh, because once you're here, you won't want to leave. There's so many things to do. It's so vast like we've talked about and you'll just, which I guess is a good thing, leave wanting more, but allow as much time as you possibly can while you're here. Number seven, leaving too late. Yes, winter comes quickly at these latitudes and it is possible to get stuck in a snowstorm. And we're speaking from experience. We've done it. Yep. Uh, you know, the Alaska Highway is not horribly treacherous in the winter months. You know, it the men passable. and women uh, who serve our country at the military bases up here when they're relocated, they do it year round. Number eight, continuing with our winter is coming theme. If you do encounter winter weather that either you or your vehicle are not comfortable or safe in, don't push it. Just pull over and wait it out. It's not worth it. Mistake number nine is going to kind of contradict the previous <laughs> two here, but leaving Alaska too early. You are really cheating yourself of a out of a special experience by not hanging out into September for the interior portions of the state. The coastline, like where we live in Seward, it's a miserable rainforest in September, but autumn in the interior is very special. The northern lights are out year round, but it's dark enough that you can see them and there's no light pollution. So make sure you stick around into September. Number 10, moving away from the weather now, listening to the wrong people for advice about coming to Alaska. Let's just say, take everything with a grain of salt. People are the sum of their experiences, and it doesn't necessarily mean that what they experienced is applicable to you or anyone else for that matter. So when in doubt, don't hesitate to seek a second or even third opinion, ideally from people who have been here. Or an Alaskan. Or even live here. <laughs> Mistake number 11 is kind of a funny one because we see it time and time again. Uh, 2015, our friends Jason and Nikki came up to visit Alaska <laughs> and it is amazing at how many people follow their summer trip to the T. You know what? Use videos like ours and theirs as inspiration. Make it your own. That's all I have to say. You know, you do not have to have the security of, you know, Staying knowing that Ben and Pacific. Rebecca and Jason and Nikki stayed here. You just need to know that this is Alaska and embrace the moment. And with that, I would say spend some time figuring out what you want to do while you're here and enjoy those things because people who visit can't do every single thing in one trip. And there might be something really fantastic that you find out you want to go do. And from my cheapskate point of view, my objective would be to avoid backtracking paths Agreed. to make a loop. So if you want to look for an objective, a loop is a good thing. Number 12, not taking dirt roads. And it doesn't matter what kind of rig you bring up here. There are dirt roads that you can take. In particular, two of our favorites are the top of the world highway from Chicken to Dawson City, as well as the Denali Highway. Both are dirt. Both are amazing, literally our favorites. Uh, and one of the greatest things about Top of the World Highway is you can actually take a ferry from the Alaska side to the Yukon side across the river there. How many other opportunities are you <laughs> gonna have to load your entire motorhome or fifth wheel or whatever you drive on a water going ferry and get across the Yukon River? I mean, seriously, that's like a bucket list item all by itself. Mistake number 13, not embracing the boondocking. Alaska is the land of free camping. That was a big adjustment we had when we went to the lower 48. And you have to pay? Yeah, and the locations that you can camp here are absolutely breathtaking. You're in the middle of nowhere, no noise, no light pollution, no other humans, just you and nature. So yeah, it's a big mistake not to embrace the ample boondocking. Number 14, and I say this one with a grain of salt because you can bring any sized rig you want up here. That's a common misnomer in and of itself. But bringing a giant rig as opposed to something a little smaller limits you. So a lot of folks have downsized, bought uh, slide in campers for their trucks or a small class C to come up here. It lends itself to mobility and freedom and just ease of travel. Uh, and you can get off on those dirt roads a lot easier and 
have more fun, do more Alaskan things. Having said that, we towed a 16 foot trailer behind a 32 foot class A motorhome all over the state mm -hmm. without a single problem. So while it's more convenient, you can come in anything you want. Mistake number 15, we have a hard time wrapping our minds around this one, but taking the RV caravan tours from the lower 48 all the way up here, you know, it's safe up here. It I'm is. gonna say it's fairly darn safe. Um, unless it's the only way you're comfortable traveling up here to Alaska, I would say there's no problem making it a do-yourself adventure. Well, I would say they really um, kind of miss out on the state of mind thing mm -hmm. and you go home so exhausted. Everybody we've ever talked to totally worn out if they do one of the caravans. Yeah. And it's a very fast pace and it's a set pace so that it doesn't really leave too much room for variables. And if you're on the road for months on end, life is full of variables. Number 16, one that I am really passionate about given my background as a medical professional you must carry a legitimate first aid kit. If you don't know which one to get, check out the description below. We love the first aid kit from My Medic. Uh, it is actually put together to save lives, especially in roadside conditions. And uh, really important coming up here because there will be many times where you have a distance between you and the nearest healthcare facility. Uh, have some skills at least carry something that if you don't have the skills, someone else will have the skill set to use it who might come upon you, uh, but be prepared. Really important. Speaking of something that will uh, save your life, make sure both drivers or all the people in your camper know how to drive the vehicle. Imagine, we'll just call it the stereotypical situation where the man does all the driving and the woman does all the house work what happens when the old ticker gives out on that old dude and the wife has no idea how to pack up camp or drive the vehicle dude you're dead make sure everybody knows how to drive the rig when you're in these remote of locations uh, that's exactly what i was going to say especially critical when you can be hundreds of miles mm -hmm. and not to say it to deter you but because there's nothing to deter it's just to be prepared yep for whatever might happen. Mistake number 17, not bringing enough tools and maintenance items that might be specific to your rig. Everyone is unique and make sure you are prepared because you don't wanna be held up waiting for something as simple as a uh, fuel filter or air filter. Now on the subject of tires, you know, there's the old adage of uh, carry two spare tires. That's not necessarily the case anymore. The roads have changed, the services have improved, but I will say that's probably not a bad idea if you have a, a travel trailer or a fifth wheel trailer. Those things tend to really chew up the tires and be hard on and having two would be an asset. Mistake number 18, thinking that you must bring a gun to Alaska with you. Now we're talking bear protection here. And in truth, most scenarios where you'll encounter bears, bear spray is your better choice, especially if you're maybe not as experienced with the gun. Um, having said that, Alaska is very gun friendly. If you want to bring one with you, you can, as long as you can get it through Canada and you should do your homework about how to get it here. Just don't feel like you must or can't come because you don't have one. Bear spray, honestly, it's a better choice anyway. And number 19 kind of segues off of 18 because a lot of people feel that they need to bring a gun for people protection. When we're home in Alaska, we carry a loaded gun with us because we can and we have them and we're out in wild places. Mm -hmm. uh, and but, we're trained to use them. Yes. Um, now back to number 19, spending too much time in Anchorage and the Matsu Valley. These are the population centers of Alaska and they are not immune to the problems related to, we'll just say human beings. There is crime and the crime for the past few years has been really bad due to some catch and release legislation, but that has now changed. <laughs> and we're not talking yeah, fishing legislation Yeah, but troopers here. can now catch and keep criminals. So <laughs> things are on the mend. We know 
a lot of people have had their cars stolen in Anchorage and the uh, Matsu Valley, and somebody even got their car stolen twice. I still can't so that. I have to say, just you know, don't spend too much time in Anchorage and the Matsu Valley. Use them for what they are, places to restock, resupply. If you have family or friends, you know, visit there. But Alaska is 30 minutes away from Anchorage. Number 20, let's get back to having a little bit of fun. <laughs> <laughs> Be sure to take advantage of all of the water sports that are available in Alaska. There's water everywhere. Bring some kayaks with you and of course some life vests. There are little streams, lakes, oceans, everything. And if you can't bring them with you, rent them once you get here. But uh, this is the land of having fun on the water, so take advantage of it. Mistake number 21, not taking advantage of the do-it-yourself fishing opportunities. These are free guys. As long as you have your own fishing gear and a fishing license, it's not like you need to go to the lake office and get a permit like you do in the lower 48 guys. This is the land of freedom here and there are fish in the water. Um, just make your way around the state, do your research and target the uh, fish runs if you want to do, make the most of the do-it-yourself fisheries. But if you're on the lakes camping, there's trout, grayling, uh, dolly varden, and it's a lot of fun. Mistake number 22, I'm so glad I get to talk about this one, tailing off of what he said, not going deep sea fishing. It is so much fun, once in a lifetime experience to catch lean cod that you hold up here by your chin. I'm 5'4 and it was touching the deck or barn door sized halibut that you bring off the bottom of the ocean at 300 feet. It really is like this incredible once in a lifetime experience, not only the fishing, but the wildlife and the scenery you get to see while you're out there. You know what they say, worst day fishing is better than the best day working. And it might be a little pricey, but it's an opportunity worth taking advantage of. Which segues perfectly into mistake number 23 is that when you go fishing in Alaska, you actually bring home meat. <laughs> and we're talking about tens of pounds of meat per fishing trip. So you need to be prepared if you're out there railing the salmon and all filleted out, you have 15 pounds of meat and you're in a, a camper van with a little wee freezer you need to be prepared or practice restraint and know that, hey, I just can't catch any more fish. There are lots of great options up here though for you. You can have it processed and backpacked and they'll even ship it home for you. And they can hold it until the day you're ready to go home. Mistake number 24, if you are a, a sportsman in the field, you can have a do-it-yourself hunting adventure quite easily. Uh, you need to pony up for the hunting license and buy some tags, but you can hunt grouse, caribou, uh, a lot of the bear and moose and uh, sheep and goat hunts require guides, but there is a lot of do-it-yourself hunting and that's in August and September, which is our favorite time of year. Mistake number 25, misconceptions and unreasonable expectations in regards to the wildlife. Uh, this in particularly relates to going to Denali National Park. Number one, thinking that you have to go to Denali to see the animals. And number two, being disappointed if you don't see them while you're in the <laughs> like park. Like it's a zoo. <laughs> right. It's not. And you're just as likely to see the wildlife outside of Denali as, you know, on your drive out of Anchorage, likely to see a moose. On the drive up the parks, likely to see black bear. Uh, don't be disappointed if you don't see them while you're there. You know, it may, weather may be too warm and they're hunkered down, might be socked in and you can't see them. One pro tip if you're going to stay into September is check out the Denali Road Lottery. You can actually drive your own vehicle in and stay in the park. Uh, the tickets are very, or the lottery is very, very early in the year. So be sure to check their website and get your application in super early. Mistake number 26, not riding the Alaska Railroad. You know, it took us way too many years to uh, take the first railroad trip and it was amazing. Not only can you focus on the land because you're not driving, but the tracks do not always follow the highway. So you get to see some very special places. Mistake number 27, 
not ponying up for once in a lifetime adventures. I'm not talking zip lining, which you can do here and it's amazing. I'm more talking about taking a helicopter up to a glacier and getting to go for a dog sled ride on the snow. That's one of my favorite things that we've ever done here. A little on the pricey side, mm -hmm. but where else in the world can you do that? So maybe pick that one special thing at least that you really want to do while you're here once in a lifetime, can't do it anywhere else, and just do it. Number 28 is right in line with the once in a lifetime experiences, but Alaska is humongous. The, it's the last frontier, hence what the license plates say, <laughs> but you can easily catch a quick flight out to places like Barrow or Nome, Alaska, and you are in native Alaskan villages. A lot of them have become hubs for regions, uh, but it's a privilege. Uh, it's a very special experience, and it's a side of Alaska that not everybody gets to see. Mistake number 29, talking a little bit about rules of the road and not pulling over to let people pass. Uh, Alaska is a state where most of the roads are two lane highways. You add to that a lot of tourists in the summertime, road construction, uh, congestion because we have motor homes and people renting cars and then uh, maybe it's the weekend and Salmon Fest is happening in the Nilchik you kind of create a recipe for disaster. People get impatient and they pass inappropriately. And you know how the saying goes, you eliminate one of those factors and you could prevent disaster. So consider pulling over, letting those people who are in a hurry pass on by you. You can keep enjoying the beautiful scenery and everybody gets to where they're going safely. Mistake number 30, not spending enough time in Canada. And we are actually very guilty of this one. To um, this day. <laughs> to this day. I don't want to give you an excuse, but when you live at the end of the road and it's 2,400 miles from the lower 48 to get home, you tend to just make a beeline. Uh, you know, Canada is an amazing neighbor. Their land is beautiful. The people are nice and welcoming uh, right now with the exchange rate. Fuel prices aren't all that bad. Mm -hmm. So if you're coming up and you have the time, make the time for Canada. You won't regret it. Well, there's your 30 biggest mistakes people make when RVing or overlanding to Alaska. There are a few more though, and that would be not hitting the subscribe button on our channel here, His and Hers Vlogs, and not visiting our website, His and Hers Hub, Dot com and embracing the educational resources that we have on this topic and not joining the two Facebook groups, Alaska RV Travelers and Alaska Overland Travelers. Thanks for joining us on this video today. We hope we've made your trip to Alaska a little bit more enjoyable and we look forward to seeing you out there on the road.